I I need a I need one light bulb. This isn't even a puzzle right now, it's just a pixel hunt for where the hell the book is. Four one five six three two four one five. Shield Rake 5. Sheldrake 5? Sheldrake 5. I think I saw the rest of this collection somewhere. Yeah, I think it was somewhere around here. Let's go take a look. Okay. Sheldrake. Have you heard of him? Sheldrake, I mean. Tell me all about him. Yeah, Lotus told me about him. There's a, There's British, a British biochemist, biochemist named Sheldrake. Sheldrake. He has a rather, rather interesting, interesting theory. theory. Morphogenetic, morphogenetic fields, fields which, which relies, relies on the theory, theory of morphic, morphic resonance. resonance. Really? From Lotus, huh? Well, Clover also said something to me about that stuff. She did? Yeah, um, what was it? The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. <sighs> that girl. I told her not to tell anyone. You did? Why? Well... Look, man, I didn't push it because we're in a hurry, but I'm kind of sick of this. How about you just tell me, okay? Tell you what? Don't give me that. About the experiment. Ugh. Very well, fine. I'll tell you everything. But not here. Let's move to the top floor. Why? I suppose I might as well start by telling you why I kept quiet. And why I made sure Clover did as well. To be honest, the explanation is quite simple. Zero told me not to. I had little choice. He didn't walk up and tell me, of course. He gave me a message engraved on a card. That's a braille card. It looks just like the one you showed us earlier. So you had two cards. No, only one. Huh? What do you mean? I thought that card just had some rules for the nonary game on it. Yes, it did. And those were the rules I read you. However, they were not the only thing on the card. You didn't read the rest of it. There was something I didn't read. Live for, about from omission. Well, perhaps I should say there was something I couldn't read. And that was? 
Tell no one of the events that took place nine years ago. Tell, and I activate your sister's detonator. It's a threat on our lives. Oh. Well, um... Well, what about Clover? Did she get a message from Zero, too? I don't believe she did. But doesn't it strike you as strange that Zero would shut my mouth, but not hers? Yeah. To be on the safe side, however, I told her it was best not to tell anyone. Still, apparently she told you. That girl. What's wrong with her telling me? I figured some stuff out with the things she told me. Hmm. I mean, it looks like the whole activate her detonator thing was just a bluff. She's prancing around downstairs, happy as a clam now that you're back. That's very true. I've decided I can trust you. I've decided to tell you the truth. The chance that Santa is zero is very high. I feel I can assume Santa doesn't have the time to observe us at the moment. And at any rate, even if he were, I very much doubt he would kill us. Why? Clover told me about the four-leaf clover, about the words. If he knew about that, then he was in my group during the first experiment. I'm sure of it. He wouldn't kill us. No matter what the situation was. <sighs> hey, uh, Snake? Yes, I know. You want to know what happened during the experiment? Yeah. How much do you know? Clover told me about... I see. The morphogenetic field in the experiments nine years prior. How the experiments had taken place simultaneously at two locations, one being the ship and the other being a building in Nevada. And the girl that died during the experiment. She told you all that, did she? Hmm. At any rate, I now know how much you've learned. All that remains for us to determine... ...is who did this and why, right? Yes. Can you tell me what happened? Yes. The people who organized the initial experiment were from a company called Cradle Pharmaceuticals. <laughs> there were four of them running the show. Gentaro Hongo, <laughs> Nagisa Nijisaki, Teruaki Kubota, Kagachika Musashido. So they're not Americans. Hongo was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Nijisaki was his right-hand man, and did the lion's share of the planning. Kubota led the company's research and development division. Musashido was their majority stockholder. It was these four people who planned the initial experiment. Hmm, let me simplify it for you. Hongo designed it, and Nijisaki put it all together. Kubota developed the technology required, and Musashido provided the cash. Huh, so it's Hongo, Nijisaki, Kubota, Musashido... Of course, more than four people were required to conduct an experiment of this scale. To that end, they organized a top-secret team to assist them with their research. All in all, they gathered ten people or so. Those ten completed their team, and they were able to begin the project. They named it the Nonary Project. The purpose of the experiment was to research the prospect of controlling a human mind through sheer will. The uh, vessel 
I suppose you could say, for this control was the morphogenetic field. Huh. Why did the glycerin suddenly begin to crystallize? Why did the crystal structure of EDT undergo a sudden change? Why did the rats improve their puzzle-solving skills with each generation? Why did they sub with Twitch Prime? Experiments with humans produced the same results. The more people who knew the answer to a question, the more there were who could answer correctly without having seen the problem before. Why is that? New subscriber. How could it happen? Thank you for hmm. subbing on Real Tunes. The answer is that the shape of the answer has been stored in a field invisible to the naked eye. New subscriber. Stipe, and thank you for subbing. Field, the resonant event and transmits Shroom. information related to that answer. That's New essentially subscriber. the idea behind morphogenetic fields. All day, thank you for subbing. Theory. Can't bring yourself to believe it. New subscriber. Yeah. Um. Let's say someone killed another person because the devil told them to do it. Whether the devil exists or not has no relevance to the murder. They believe the devil exists. Whether or not he does is immaterial. So what matters here is that Hongo believed in the morphogenetic field. That's right. But I still don't get it. You said they wanted to figure out how to control people. Right? That is what you were saying. Yes. So how are they going to do that with a morphogenetic field? I'll keep it simple. Let's suppose 10,000 people have solved a certain problem. The chance of you knowing that answer, even if no one has told you, will go up. Let's have another example, shall we? Say one million people were to do a handstand right now. Okay. Tomorrow, the chances of you doing a handstand would be higher, even if you had heard nothing of this hypothetical mass handstanding. Mankind's thought process and actions are all part of a resonant event. All of the resonant events encoded in the fields are projected onto you. Of course, this assumes you believe in this theory. Do you follow so far? Not really. Yeah. Now, if there was a person who had the same effect as those millions of people, what would happen? If that one person were to do a handstand, other people would find themselves wanting to do handstands as well. Can you imagine what a person with powers like that would be able to do? Come on, there's no way. Well, I'm too fat to do a handstand, though. I'm not done. Imagine another scenario. Imagine another person. This is an ordinary person. Let's say he does a handstand. What if there was someone who could grab the resonant event he created by doing that and use it to make other people do handstands? What would happen then? Mm. There'd be a lot more performers in the world? A person who has the power to write to the field and someone who can read from the same. Uh, no, morphogenetic field is pseudoscience. There's no real way to measure it. You could think of them as the writer and the reader or the transmitter and the receiver. What would the world be like if there were people with abilities like these? So the transmitter's resonant event can be transmitted through the field and sent to the receiver. I wonder if, if I like type, let's say, Dan W, if that makes other people type Dan W. and then the transmitter can control the receiver however they wish. That's what you're saying, right? Yes, close enough at least. Come on, that's just crazy. Well, if you want to prove that, then you'll have to test it first. At least, that was how they thought. 
That was why they decided to do their experiment. That was how the Nonary Project began. By the way, Junpei, have you ever heard of the Gansfeld experiment? Yeah, that was an experiment in telepathy, right? You place a pair of subjects in separate rooms. Then you show one a picture and ask the other what they see. Interesting. I'm impressed. Yes, that is exactly correct. And all failed. So, why did you bring up the Gansfeld experiment? It was used to screen subjects for the Nonary Project. The hospital in a remote town was affiliated with Cradle Pharmaceuticals. Hongo used it to conduct experiments on visiting children in secret. Well, we already know that that's Ace, and we know that that is the one guy. That looks like the captain. That I don't recognize. Some of them, he found, had potential. He began to gather children that showed promise. Children that seemed as though they might be able to access the field. Of course, none of them volunteered. They were kidnapped. Yeah, so judging based on what we saw so far, this definitely looks like guy number nine. We already know that that's Ace. We found that from another path. That looks like the captain, and this might be the shower guy. I don't know. There were nine pairs of siblings taken for 18 children total. For reasons that were not fully understood at the time, each pair had one transmitter and one receiver. They were split perfectly. As such, the 18 children were split into two groups of nine. The children who were put into group Q were the ones who excelled at transmitting. They were transferred to the mock experiment building known as Building Q in the Nevada desert. The children who excelled at receiving were put in group A. What, you mean like bottoms? Group A was then placed on the former hospital ship Gigantic. From the experiments he had conducted so far, Hongo had learned the following. There are two things that can increase one's resonance with the fields. The first is epiphany. The other is danger. Have you ever been faced with an especially difficult problem and thought about it very long and very hard until finally an answer suddenly appeared in your mind? It may seem obvious to say so, but that is what is meant by epiphany. The information obtained through that epiphany can be easily transmitted through the fields where it can be easily interpreted. Adding danger to that equation allows for even easier field access. That's where Hongo came in. They set up a number of puzzles across the gigantic. The participants had to solve each one before they could move to the next room. Of course, he hadn't forgotten to include danger. New subscriber! He had detonated a bomb on the hull of the gigantic. The children in Group A were forced to play the nonary game as the ship sunk. Thank you for the new sub, Hypo. By forcing the children into a life or death situation, Hongo hoped to increase the likelihood of their tapping into the fields. The children from Group Q, on the other hand, were confined to the mock experiment building, Building Q. Building Q duplicated the interior and puzzles of the gigantic exactly. Every detail was exactly the same. Hongo explained the situation to the children in Group Q. Solve the puzzles you find throughout the rooms. When you have the answers, transmit that information to the children in Group A. If you succeed, they will be able to solve the puzzles and escape. But if you fail, then the gigantic will sink and your brothers and sisters will drown. Those were his orders. Do you know why the astronauts of Apollo 13 were able to return to Earth safely? It was because NASA had now access to a replica away. of the Apollo 13 capsule. Thank you, Johnny J. Man, for the uh, final tip. Says, have to say that your morphogenetic field's looking damn fine today, Dan. Dan Gasm. Thank you. All of the equipment, the instruments, everything. All of it identical. Everything was just like the real Apollo 13. 
NASA was able to replicate the situation the astronauts found themselves in. By putting themselves in the same situation, they attempted to solve the problems the astronauts were dealing with. Once they found solutions, they reported their findings to the men aboard the actual capsule. That was how they were able to return safely. It was the same with the gigantic and building Q. The children from Group Q had to use the power of Epiphany to solve the puzzles they found and transmit what they learned through the fields. The children in Group A, however, they had to access the fields to learn how they might advance to the next stage. That is the simplest explanation I can manage. Huh. Hey, Junpei, Snake! How much longer are you two gonna sit around on those bony asses? Yeah, not like we're on a time limit or anything. Get down here already! He's right. Let's go, shall we? We don't have much time. We need to get out of here and soon. Hold it. There's one more thing I want to ask you. Oh, God. Hmm? Are you sure that there were 18 kids? Why? Well, I thought it was only 16. Oh, yes. That was what they said on the news, wasn't it? Yes. I have no doubt that 18 children were abducted and used in Hongo's experiment. After all, you couldn't exactly play a nonary game with any less, could you? Well, yeah, but are you saying that the news got it wrong? Yes, I am. There were two more children. However, they had no relatives that I'm aware of. I imagine no one filed a police report when they went missing. They were brother and sister, like Clover and I. The brother's name was Aoi. The sister's name was... Her name was... <laughs> her name was Akane. <gasps> That was the girl who died. Akane Kurashiki died? Nine years ago? Wait, what? Then, who is June? No, 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 no. That, that's impossible. It can't be true. Akane isn't that uncommon of a name. If Snake had known her last name, that's a different matter entirely. So they share a name. A lot of other people do too. It doesn't mean anything. It was someone else. Of course it was. It has to be. <laughs> Is something wrong, Junpei? Your breathing sounds strange. Oh, uh, no, it's it's nothing. I'm fine. Because Akane is such a common name. Let's get back down there, all right? <sighs> I couldn't do it. Why didn't I ask? What's her last name? I just couldn't get the words to come out. Cell Drake 5. <gasps> Big red button. You know, we just could have moved those books and pressed the button the whole goddamn time. The whole time we could just press the goddamn button. We just move the damn books. Does that sound something big moving from the top floor? What? I think I type something on that keyboard. I can only enter letters. Looks like I can only enter four letters. Let's see how it works. I need to enter and type the letters. About zero. No. Nope. What's the numbers on top mean? 13, 13, 14, 10, and 13. Roman numerals, Eric numerals. 13, 14. Uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, 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 N, M, N, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, 
J. M N J M. Or if it's if it's uh, hexadecimal, we start at ten. So a thirteen would be would it be C? Is 10A or is 11A? Metal door. There's a handle in the middle of it. Can't get it open. That means the other door. Oh my god, we found it! It has been found. All right, this is the next. Oh, the door. Did that just close on its own? Don't tell me we can't go back. I don't know. Let's see. Damn it. It looks like it locks automatically. Is there any other way out? Well, uh, there's another door over on the right. There's a card reader next to it. It's got a red light on it, though, so I'm pretty sure it's locked, too. So much junk in this room. But there is a card reader, right? Yeah. Then perhaps if we find a key card, we could open the door and leave? Maybe. Well, yeah, that might work, but... Uh, hey, wait a minute. Are what? you saying we're going to have to search through this room for one little card? Yeah. Oh, man. <sighs> Looks that way. There's so much junk in no here. No way. For real? Well, we can sit down and wait to die if that's what you prefer. Let's just do that. It's easier. I rather doubt that, however, so it would be wise to start looking. We haven't much time. Let's find that key card. Oh, and the Neptune key as well. We won't be able to get through the hallway without it. <sighs> All right then, uh. let's begin. Find it. Oh my god, still so much to go. Piles of crap everywhere. This place is a mess. So many, so I don't know where to start. This crab looks familiar. There are parts of the puzzle we saw in the other rooms. It's, if it's true, then, the room could be Zero's laboratory. Perhaps the machine's puzzling to plan to come to fruition. This is a nautical table. I feel like you've seen this before. Ruler. Light. Look, Jupiter, the rest of here looks like Elvis' face. 
Uh, yeah. How exciting. Gosh, this desk is really big. It feels really sturdy. Yeah, it does seem pretty heavy-duty. heavy, heavy duty. suppose it belongs to whoever uses this room, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Look, it's some stool. panel from the big screen here looks like someone's screen now what's this there are 15 cells here numbers and letters in them let me see that so whenever you touch a cell uh, the one next to it turns on or off okay you make up make the all cells on the right and the bottom green look at this piece of paper of under things you want to take a look at it something to do with the puzzle paper. Numbers of letters connected by equal signs on it. Just like she says, probably related to the puzzle on the screen somehow. This really helps. Hee 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 hee. Alright, let's go back and try again. Make them all green. Nailed it. <laughs> you did it too bad. You're so smart. You seem to have done an excellent job of solving the puzzle. <laughs> Just what I expected from you, Junpei. Okay, come on, you're embarrassing me. Whoa, don't get cocky, kid. We don't we don't got time for that. Look at this. Check out the right edge of the control panel. <laughs> this slid open, something came out. Oh man. I totally knew what I was doing there. <laughs> I am the best problem solver ever. Oh, it's like shields go in there. I didn't brute force it, I told you what I was doing. God. It was all calculated. <laughs> Monitor's prize machine, really dim though. Got a map of the world, barely see it. It's a wheel over here. You were in the chart room, weren't you? There's a puzzle like this in the wheelhouse. I can figure out how this one works looking at that compass. This thing worked just like the other one. Point for us this nautical table we just found. You just have to match the direction of the compass with the lines on the nautical table. I used the steering wheel in the wheelhouse. This time I think I'm going to use the wheel attached to the side here. Show me now. I don't know what I'm entering. There we go. Uh, oh. So, south. I gotta write it down. Hold on, guys. I gotta go out and grab my food. My food's gonna be delivered in just a minute. I'll be right back in a couple minutes.
actually sandwiches in a smoothie today.
jalapeno chips. I need a pen and paper brush. All right. South. West. South. East. North. East. East. North, east. East, North, East, nailed it. Another emblem. Hmm. Oh my god. They're coughing in there. A coffin. The seventh thing all pale he's thinking the same thing i am no way could this be sorry but what's going on it's a coffin there's the vampire in it I guess clover and snake don't know the story All ice. Hmm. Let's open it, shall we? You give me a hand. Okay, I got it. What, three, two, one. Ha! Ugh! Hmm. Maybe it won't open. Hmm. We'll find out. We need to uh, unlock it first by completing the puzzles. Hmm. Got some on the screen at least. Wait a minute. Yeah, dots in your ditch for Morse code.
Let me see the but the picture again. Where do I see the picture? Oh. once I know what I want ice I is dot dot, C is slash dot slash dot, E is dot. Got it. Excellent work. Answer was ice. Hmm. Sound from behind the shutter. Okay, open. Oh man, there's nobody in there. Shit, I can't believe I was scared of something like that. What do you mean nobody? Were you expecting someone to be in there? Uh, it's a long story. Ask Junpei about it sometime. Uh, just like Seb, no one's in there. Something in there though. Two of somethings actually. A key and a plate. Hmm. happen got some on the monitor.
All right. Digital root must be six and three. All right. Eight plus six is 14. Plus four is 18, which is nine. Five and one, and then that is three. Hmm. Cross circle. So we need 10. So that's 10 plus. No. Nope. 10, which is one. And then the other one would be. 10 plus 8, which is 19, which is 10, which is 1. Uh, if I can get a 9 and a 7. No. Nine plus seven turns that into eight. So six. One six. Oh wait, no. Ten is one. No, that's nine. Plus seven equals sixteen, which is seven. And this would be nine seventeen, which is eight plus two, which is one. Okay, I know how to do it. Stop explaining it after two times already. Jesus. Seven and seven. Nope, that's not gonna work that time. Wait. That's seven. Ten. Five is six. That's not going to work. So, eleven and five is seven plus got it. Good job. Let me do the last one. Eight nine. Oh, whoops. Uh, so three, three and two. Uh, seven plus eight is fifteen to six. Wait. 
Can I use five on one? There we go. Got it. A picture. A, a picture. What the? <gasps> what the hell is this? This man with a mustache on the right. He's the same guy we found murdered in the captain's quarters. He had the zero bracelet on his left arm. And the second man with the glasses and a doctor's coat. He's the ninth man, the one with bracelet number nine. He died after he went into door five. But this guy, the one in the striped suit. Oh man, that's Ace. Yeah, I guess it is. No doubt about it. But what does it mean? What is Ace doing in this picture? Not only Ace, the ninth man and Cap too. And they look happy, like they knew each other well. Why? How? How in the world are these four men connected? You say Ace is in that picture? Yeah, it doesn't look like it was taken recently though. Ace, the ninth man and Cap all look about 10 years younger. Ah. Oh. So the ninth man and the man you found murdered in the captain's quarters are also in the picture? Yeah. Is there anyone else? Or are there only three people in the picture? I'm afraid I can't see it. No, there's one more guy. He's got kind of long hair. He looks smart, but a little cold. He's the only one I don't recognize. Hmm. What's the date of the photograph? It doesn't have one. Did you look on the back? The back? Yes, the reverse. The other side. Huh. Praying for the success of the Nonary Project. With Nijisaki, Kubota, and Musashido. Huh. Then the four men in this picture were the organizers of the Nonary game nine years ago. That means Ace, the Ninth Man, and Cap were all responsible for making it happen. But... I feel like I should be more shocked about this. It's almost as if that's just how things were always supposed to be. Why? Why am I not surprised? Ace was the one in charge of the Nonary Project, but... Then why? Why am I so calm? Hi, Butter. It's like I already knew. Ah, of course. I understand now. Ace was the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. He was the one who invented the game nine years ago. He was Gintaro Hongo. Ace is... Hongo? I had my suspicions from the beginning. Their voices were similar. Too similar to be a coincidence. I could never forget his voice. It was the voice of the devil. <gasps> Satan. I couldn't be sure, though. After all, I had no way to check. I certainly couldn't ask him. Even if I had known, however, I would never have told you. Zero made it quite clear what would have happened if I did. No, that wasn't too hard to figure out who those people in the photo were. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. Huh? I didn't know that Ace was Hongo. Oh, yes. I suppose you wouldn't have. Nine years ago, you were in Building Q in Nevada. 
But Hongo was in the Gigantic with us. I know. New That's subscriber. why I didn't know what Hongo looked like. But why? Fart on the why mic. Thank you, you for me? subbing. I mean, I'm your sister, right? You could have told me. I'm sorry. I apologize for keeping this from you. But if I'd told you, Clover, you would have told everyone else. And if you did, then I would have been forced to tell them about what happened nine years ago. I had to prevent that. Uh. Hey, Junpei. You think I could borrow that picture for a sec? Sure. Mm. Hongo Kubota. Nijisaki Musashido. Hongo Kubota. Nijisaki Musashido. Hongo Kubota. Nijisaki Musashido. H K N M. Hey, Seven, do you? Shut it. Just. Just be quiet. Let him think, I'm damn it. This close to remembering. This close. Hongo Kubota Nijisaki Musashiro. H K N M. How? He knows not much. He knows not much. It's an. It's a thing. Cradle Pharmaceuticals Nonary Project. <gasps> shit. What? What's wrong? Holy shit, this is nuts. Um, what's nuts? I remember. Remember what? Everything. Everything? All the things? Yeah, yeah, I, I remember all of it. My memory's back. I, I remember what happened before I got snatched. What happened? What? Uh. Huh? Let me tell you what happened. Like Snake said, Ace is Hongo. From the right, the other three are Musashido, Nijisaki, and Kubota. Musashido was the man with the cash. Nijisaki was Hongo's right-hand man. And Kubota developed the actual technical details of the experiments. How do you know all this? Come on, man. I told you. I finally got my memory back. No, that's not what I mean. I'm trying to ask you why you knew all this stuff in the first place, before you forgot it. <laughs> you really want to know? Of course. Me too. Hmm. This is gonna take a while. Hell, it'll probably take me a good three days to tell you everything. We got five minutes. Well, we don't have three days. Just give us the short version, all right? I just just gonna explode or anything. Short version, huh? All right, fine. I'll give it a shot. No promises, though. I'm a detective. It's a little awkward to say this about myself, but you could probably consider me a lone wolf type. I hold to my own code, as I think doing what's right is more important than doing what you're told. That's why I followed my gut that night. A slim lead brought me to the wharf. Lieutenant Wharf? It was nine years ago. The wharf had been cold as fuck, and I could barely see squat. Language. I was investigating a mess of kidnappings, all of them children. It all had one thing in common, a history of visits to one particular hospital. A hospital under the management of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. My investigation had turned up evidence that Cradle had been involved in the kidnappings. After a little sweet talking, I managed to finally get a real lead from someone inside Cradle. My source told me this. Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner docked offshore. So I headed to the wharf. From the shadows, I searched the harbor until I found the ship he was talking about. 
There's a bunch of movement here. Men in black suits, many of them carrying large bags. The bags. There was something about the way they moved as they were carried. No doubt about it. There were human beings in those bags. I moved before I realized it. I came out of hiding, my gun already in my hand. Don't move. I felt metal touch the back of my head. Drop the gun. I could kill you right now. It'd be easy to get away with it, too. Just tie an anchor to your feet, and no one would find you for a week. That would you want? The fish here would love a meal. He kept digging the cold metal thing into my skull. <sighs> there was nothing I could do. I did what he said and laid my gun on the ground. Then suddenly, there was a sharp pain in my neck. A needle. A drug? That was my last thought. My face hit cold concrete. I was out like a light after that. <clears throat> I woke up on a hard floor. Damn it. Shit, my head hurts. I did a quick once over of the room. That's when he realized he was on the set of The Cosby Show. Where am I? A small, shabby bed, a dirty sink. A toilet with no privacy. I had seen it countless times as a cop. Yeah, we saw some of this. Uh... There's a little more detail now, but we saw most of this um, on the far right path. I'm in a cell, huh? Facing the toilet was a door set into the wall. I was still pretty woozy, but I made my way over to it. I pushed and pulled on it, but... <clears throat> it was not like I expected much else. It would be dumb enough to put me in a cell and leave it unlocked. Threw myself against the door a few times, but it wouldn't budge. I knew it. Well, if you want out of this cell, just got to suck in my pudding pop. I gave up and made my way back to the bed and sat down. Hmm. Huh. I sat there for a very, very long time. <laughs> Who knows how long. Then I heard a faint voice. The voice was far away. I couldn't understand what it was saying. But I could hear one. It was pretty high, probably a little kid. Huh? No, it was several. Huh. I hear five, or six, maybe more. Where? Where are they coming from? I pressed my ear to the wall and tried to listen through it. No, that's not it. Left. It's coming from under the bed? I hauled him under the frame and flipped the thing over. And there it was. The bed had hidden an air vent under it. The hole in the wall was covered by a metal grate. I dropped flat on the floor and peered through the grate. I couldn't see sh but I knew it in my gut. Censored. This was where those voices were coming from. Hold up. Why are there kids here? But then what my inside man told me popped into my head. Tonight, a ship is set to take the children to a large passenger liner docked offshore. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Am I on that ship? It didn't matter. New subscriber. All I knew was I had to get to those kids. I checked out the metal grate. 
Did I fit? I stuck my fingers in and grabbed it. And then... I love how this is looking at a toilet as he's making these sounds. Oh, God! Oh, God! My O-ring! <sighs> yeah! How do you like that, you son of a bitch? Yeah! I finally got the damn thing off. Sweat was dripping down my face, so I wiped it off and crawled inside. Biggest poo ever. The first bit or so was tight. I had a wriggle on my belly. It wind up eventually, and there was space for me to crawl along on my hands and knees. I went from crawling like a worm in dirt to skittering like a bug. Couldn't say it was much better, but I'd take what I could get. And when I'd been in the thing long enough to start wondering where it'd take me... A massive sound nearly scared the piss out of me. It was like a heavy metal door had just been slammed shut. Then, there was a voice. What? I wasn't sure what it meant, but anything with incinerator is bad news. Reminds me of yesterday. Then, almost as if that was a cue, I heard a mess of young sounding voices. A bunch of them were straight up screaming in terror. And all the sounds together made a howl that made the hair on my neck stand straight up. Damn it! What the hell is going on here? I scrambled through the duct as fast as I could. I made a giant racket, but I didn't care at that point. I soon found a metal door on the left side of the duct. The kids were screaming on the other side. I found it. I yanked the handle and threw the door open. I almost ripped the metal off its hinges. What the... What the hell is this place? I couldn't believe what I saw. The room had a dome up top. There had to be about nine walls, all the same size. Up in the ceiling was an upside down funnel, almost like a chimney. I looked down. There they were, the kids I'd been searching for. They all gawked up at me, suddenly silent, for the moment, from surprise and fear. Scared of the room or me, I couldn't tell. Probably both, actually. Not like I can blame them running into a mug like this when they're already scared shitless. I snorted at my own dig at myself and turned to the kids. Don't worry, kids. I'm not your enemy. I'm one of the good guys. All of them stood there, frozen. Let it go. Well, except one. He was a boy slightly older <gasps> than the others. A Santa. Who the hell are you? He stepped forward and glared at me suspiciously. I'm a detective. I'm here to rescue you. It looked like they relaxed some the second I got the words out. How are you gonna help us? Where's the exit? There isn't one. The doors we came in through won't open, and the door over there... He kinda cut himself off. I think he was considering something before he changed his mind. Anyway, there's no point. We can't all get out of here. If we don't get out of here, we're gonna be burned to death. Burned to death? Can't you hear it? That voice said the incinerator's gonna start up soon! So... The voice spoke again. Incineration will begin in 15 minutes. They only had 15 minutes. I looked back down at the kids. Looks like a good 20 or 30 feet to the floor. No way I could pull them up. Too big of a distance for any of us to reach. What the hell was I gonna do? But then I got an idea. Wait right there, I'm gonna be right back. What? Where, where is he going? Are, are you just gonna leave us here? They just got frightened again. I'm not the best at that kind of thing, but I tried to reassure them with a smile. Don't worry, all right, I'll be back, I promise. So just stay calm and wait right there, got it? I didn't wait to hear them respond. It wasn't time. I had to hurry. Well, as fast as a guy could on his hands and knees. Didn't take me long to get back to my cell. 
Still no way out of there, but I had a plan. I needed something from the room. When I got it, I dove back into the hole and took off towards the incinerator. Then... The bed sheet. Sorry to keep you waiting, guys. I tipped out the doorway and dropped down the rope I brought with me. Back in the cell, I tore in the bed sheets into strips and tied them together to make a rope. It was sloppy, but it got the job done. All right, just tie that around yourself, okay? I'll pull you up one at a time. Only one person come up at a time, though. Right. Huh. Wait a sec. Something was off. There were more of you before. Where'd the rest of you go? The boy in the uniform answered. I let them go on ahead. We opened the number nine door and they left. What? You're telling me you opened that door? That's what I said. Then what the hell are you doing here? We couldn't go with them. Why not? Look, the only people who can go through the numbered door... He was in the middle of explaining when... Incineration will begin in five minutes. Oh, shit! The wall shook a bit from the voice bouncing around. Look, that can wait, all right? Just get us out of here! Uh, right! Grabbed onto the rope. The first one I pulled up was a girl with a ponytail. Next was a girl with a red necktie. A boy in a jacket came after. He said he'd climb up on his own. The boy in the uniform with the last up. Like the other kid, he climbed up the rope himself. He looked pretty scrawny, but I guess he was stronger than he looked. He moved fast, but when he was almost to me, we heard some knocking. Everyone looked at the door. It had a thick, square window set into it. On the other side, an angry face was staring in. God damn it! What's going on here? Why is the room empty? Where the hell are those fucking kids? The door opened, and a man stepped in looking half mad with fury. I recognized his face. I saw him many times in photos during my investigation. The man's name? was Gintaru Hongo, the CEO of Cradle Pharmaceuticals. <sighs> Hongo saw the boy hanging from the rope. Yeah! It was like he was an animal. He lunged for the rope. Hurry! I know! The boy in the uniform booked it up the rope. You son of a bitch! Get back here, you little shit! Fifteen feet. Ten. The second I could reach the kid, I grabbed him. I hauled him up and tossed him into the duck behind me. No! No! Hongo had lost it. His face didn't even look human. It was like the bastard pulled off his fake face. He was really a terrifying devil or some kind of damn monster. I quickly reeled in the rope, leaving a furious Hongo yelling at me from the floor. You fucking bastard! You won't get away with this! How dare you compromise this experiment! Experiment? What experiment? <laughs> Incineration will begin in one minute. Hey, old man! What the hell are you doing? Hurry up! The boy in the uniform was trying to get my attention. I may have thrown a salute in the raging asshole's face before I closed the door behind me. No point to going back to the cell, so we went down the other direction instead. After about 30 feet, we came across another duct on the left. This one was heading down. Everybody nodded took turns sliding down it. The duct emptied us out into a narrow hallway. There was a door on either side. The one on the left was a normal double door. But the one on the right was familiar. It had black and yellow stripes and a device next to it on the wall. The plate on it read, Incinerator. How the hell is this a short version? Incinerator? I would hate to hear the long version, my god. Where we were. It was the girl with the red tie who answered me. We were inside an incinerator? Yeah. Hongo might still be there. It looks like it's been shut off, though. Wait, what? If he's still in there. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, 
That meant we better. We gotta get out of here. Go to the other door. Hurry. The kids started running, and I was close on their heels. On the other side of the door was a large spiral staircase. Run! Didn't need to tell them twice. Up, up, and up. Our feet pounded the steps, our arms pumping fast. Round, round, round. The devil was on our tail. <sighs> the stairway kept going. We passed a couple of landings when the boy in the uniform suddenly spoke. Things up. Akane's not catching up to us. Akane? My kid's sister. The girl with the red necktie. Akane. Akane. That's strange. I didn't remember seeing that name on the list of missing kids. Hey! Akane! He kept his hands around his mouth and yelled. Maybe we outran her. The boy in the uniform skidded to a stop. I stopped too. And so did the other two kids. When did we do that? Well, we passed a couple big rooms on the way here. Maybe she took a rest in one of them? No, that's impossible. Sorry, Grandpa. You keep going. I gotta go look for her downstairs. He turned to go. Hey, kid, wait! God damn it, I said wait! I don't think the kid even heard me. Fuck! I spun around to the boy in the jacket, the girl with the ponytail. I'm going after him. You two keep going, all right? You got it? The girl nodded and ran up the stairs. But the boy... I'm going with you. I didn't have time to argue. I just nodded and took off down the stairs. I could hear him following her. We ran all the way to the bottom floor, calling for her. Akane was nowhere to be found. God damn it, where the hell did she go? I could tell the kid was frustrated. And then suddenly... I heard a girl's voice. Akane! The boy in the uniform threw open the door and leapt into the hallway by the incinerator. We rushed in after him. I couldn't for the life of me believe what we were seeing. That bastard Hongo had Akane by the arm and was forcing her into the incinerator. Come on, goddammit, move! No, I don't want to! Let me go, please! Let go of me! She planted her feet squarely on the floor and was struggling to get away. But Hongo was bigger and stronger. She wasn't gonna win. Uh, Akane! Her brother roared with anger and charged toward Hongo. Too late, idiot! Hongo lifted Akane bodily into the air and threw her, still fighting him, into the incinerator. Ah! Before we could even blink, Hongo had leapt through the door after her. We saw him land inside. And then, the door slammed shut. We ran to the door. We did everything we could think of to get the thing open. But... Ah! Fuck! It's no use! The goddamn thing won't move an inch! He started slamming his fists against the door. He was close to shattering his knuckles with how hard he pounded on it. Are you 
okay? You came back! Her voice was muffled, but all of us could hear the sheer terror in it. What should I do? I, I think I'm trapped in here! Where's Hongo? He went out the other door! W what Warning. Warning. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Automatic incineration will take place in 18 minutes. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Repeat. Emergency incineration command has been acknowledged. Uh oh. Are you fucking kidding me? It's the same damn thing! Are you there? Yeah, we're here. Just hang on, alright? We're gonna figure out a way to save you. His words would have seemed like a sick joke to her if she'd been able to see how white and bloodless his face was right then. Not real. It's, it's okay. Right. I'll figure something out. I promise. I promise. Okay. You hear me? I promise. Liar. It was torture listening to her sobbing on the other side of the door. Her brother was nearly crying himself. He could only stand there, fists clenched so tight his knuckles were white. I mean, she's just a work of fiction. She's not real. She can't die. Uh, what happened then? She died. Come on, man. Put yourself in my shoes. It doesn't end good. You think I want to remember that? Then... Yeah. Shit. If I'd known it was gonna be like this... I almost wish I hadn't remembered. Hey, um, are you... are you sure? Huh? Look, I don't want to ask this either, but... There's... there's something I don't get. Hmm. So if you could just... tell me... Did that girl, Akane, really... Yeah, I'm sure. There wasn't anything we could do. After a while, the countdown ended, and we heard something... burning. We... The... fire stopped, but we still didn't move. Me and the jacket kid were frozen. The boy in the uniform collapsed as if he couldn't hold himself up anymore. A few minutes passed. The door opened. This girl is on fire! The boy in the uniform tripped over his own feet running in. We followed, too numb to speak. The air in the incinerator was hot. Every breath made my lungs feel like they were on fire. It was like standing on hot asphalt. The air was wavering and... And in the middle of the room... There it lay. The kid's legs were shaking so bad, I don't know how he managed to walk. I couldn't see his face, but... His body somehow looked empty. Finally, he reached it. He fell to his knees as his legs gave out on him. And then... Ah! Um. New subscriber! Reg, thank you for subbing! Um... 